Great. Um, all right, so let me see. Let me pull up my trusty notepad and change the fonts so you guys can see it. Okay, um, the first thing that I'm going to be talking about is uh, Safeless. Now, uh, many of you are familiar with Safeless, um, and what I'm going to do is shed a little bit of a different light on them from what you may be used to. Some people that have used Safeless before, and I'll tell you the negatives, are that, oh, when I join a Safeless, all I did is do is get bombarded with other people's solicitations and they never read mine and that kind of thing. Well, that's somewhat true. You do get bombarded with uh, other people's information. However, most of the people probably won't even read yours. Now, that's you know the way marketing is in general, not necessarily safeless, um, because usually when you're doing some kind of marketing, if you get even 1% or, two, depending on a marketing method, 2%, 3%, or a quarter percent or whatever, that mean, you know, that's about average depending on the type of marketing you're doing. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, you know, safe lists are no different from that. It's it's really uh, how much exposure that you can give out to people. And hey, if somebody's in the right time in their life to see it, and you're using a safe list, then uh, they're going to sign up, you know, or they're going to look at it, and then and then the whole sorting and sifting process happens to work. So, safe list. If you're not familiar with what they are and what they do. <coughs> It's where people can join a, a membership membership community on the internet, and they pretty much say to the membership, and one thing you agree to do is that, okay, if I join the membership, I am willing and giving permission to the other members to send me their solicitations. Thus, it's an email safe list, okay, with the you know quotations going over safe, meaning safe from spam. So you're giving permission for people to send you solicitations for the right for you to send them solicitations. Okay. Now there's different memberships. There's free, and then they have many of them have three or four or five whatever different levels of participation. And starting at free, going to uh, just for instance a few dollars a month, to five dollars a month, to ten, fifteen, whatever, thirty dollars a month. And generally, as you go up in the uh, the purchase of say the monthly or the single purchase price, then you will be able to get less solicitations maybe, or you'll be able to send out more often to people, or something to that effect. So you're getting a a, a perk for being a paid member. So um, now for this this specific illustration, I'm going to give you here. It's not so much uh, that yeah you can send out things to people. The angle that I'm going to be giving you today is using the, I guess, unwanted for many, many people, emails and solicitations you're getting from other people, using those to your advantage. So what do I mean by that? Well, I, um, I, one time I got thinking about safe lists and I was like, ah, you know, do I want to get all these emails? And I thought about it and I said, what are these people sending me? They're sending me solicitations for their business, right? Well, what are we in business trying to do to, um, you know, to, I'm in business to sell my product or to whatever program I'm promoting, and these people are the very people that are the type of people I'm looking for, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So even though they're sending me their solicitation, they're the exact people I'm looking for for my business. So why can't I use those lists? and gather information and gather data to be able to in turn send them something over a period of time maybe outside of the safe list community so what I started to do was gather information on those people when they started to send me stuff uh, general I use Microsoft Outlook I also have Gmail accounts and stuff too but when I use Microsoft Outlook I'm able to go in and let me just open this here so you can see this happens to me in Microsoft Outlook. Okay. Now what I do is when an email comes in, I'll create a folder on the left hand side. As you can see, I've, I've used this for a long time and I have lots and lots of folders okay, for different things and I keep everything separated. So um, I'll have one on here and this is one that I've used in the past. This is called Target Pro Blaster which is a safe list. So as you can see, and I know I haven't 
gotten information from them in quite a while, but at that time I had 17,000 that came in. And what I do is say when these come in, I'll I'll uh, I'll tag anything that comes in. So I'll go right click and then I will create a rule. Okay, and then when I create a rule, this part here, the subject line, if it's coming from the safe list, it'll usually have something in there designated that it's coming from the safe list, or I, I'll see that uh, the from box will be something specific that I'll know what it is, okay, and it's usually the same. So I'll say, okay, anything coming from this subject line or this from, I want them to go to and I'll select move it to folder and I'll select over here and then I'll select the folder that I want to send it to. So I'll go over here and in, that, in this case I clicked on Target Pro Blaster. So if I click on Target Pro Blaster now anything coming from this location or with this subject line or with this keyword in the subject line where you can see there's quite a few different um, options here you can move it to this folder so this way I don't have to sit and sort sort and sift, then it'll automatically do it for me, and I'm not going to do it now, so it'll automatically do it for me, and it goes and puts it in this folder. So I don't have to worry about the massive amount of stuff coming in here. It's going to automatically do that, and then all I would do is go to, as you can see, I haven't used this company in a while, but when I did, look at all the stuff that came in, and you can see over here, so in 3, the January 3rd, there's a lot. You know, see how many is coming in on a daily basis? January 3rd, January 2nd, that's a lot. So what I would do is I tagged anything with Target Pro Blaster in the from line goes into this folder. It makes it very short and sweet and clean and everything. Then what I would do is come over here and I would go from one to the other. Hey, welcome, Roy. Thanks for coming on. So I would uh, go over here and I'll look on this side of the emails because I use um, like a preview section. So I set up over here to view... Okay, and let's see, reading pane, to the, or use my reading pane over to the right. So that means getting calls at, at 10 o'clock at night, huh? Always doing the business. All right, so uh, the reading pane is over on the right-hand side, so this way I can see what's in the email. So now what I'll do, let me move this over, is I'll start collecting the information. So I'll open up Microsoft Excel, have a clean spreadsheet right here, and I'll see if I can start finding some information from these people. Now, in this one, there's not that much. Now, um, the information and links on here are probably no good. It's, I mean, it's been two years. But what I would do is go over here. Maybe I'll copy this link, and I'll go over here to Excel, and I'll put in, you know, first name, last name, um, site, which is Target Pro Blaster. Or, no, um, uh, let's see, I'll put safe list, which would be target pro blast. The, the site would be the URL, okay, that I, that's in the email, and uh, the date that I got it, and any other information that I want to collect. So I would just constantly go back and forth and say, okay, here's the site link. I'll copy that because I want to use that as proof that I got it. So uh, generally, I'll take because the link is very long. I'll put the site on the last one. So say if I put site over here, all right, and it's pasted over there, <clears throat> and then I'll collect the information. Now, I if I want to collect more information, I'll go to the link, and I don't think this would actually work. Uh, maybe it might. See if it even comes in. And I'll, I'll go to the page itself and see if I can collect any information there. Like, especially I'm looking for the name, the phone number, and the email of the person. That's what I'm really looking for, okay? Well, as I thought, that, that link didn't work. So um, now I'll collect what I can and go down to the next one, okay? Collect what I can and go down to the next one, and so on. And I would just sit here and do this and keep on going down and collecting. So in a lot of cases, see, here's the name. I'll, take, I'll collect the name. And then when I go to the <clears throat> the website, okay, here's a free report. If I want to fill this out, I can do that, you know. And I'll go and and I'll collect whatever information I can. So without beating a dead horse, I think you can 
get the idea of where I'm going with this, okay? Now, again, these are the types of people that you're looking for. Okay, you have a name over here. Sometimes you'll find the phone number on here as well. Uh, sometimes you'll find the email address on there as well. Name, phone number, email. That's the main thing you're looking for. And um, if you have to go to the website to collect the information, uh, I mean, leads like this are you know, typically going to cost you $0.75 cents to $2 a piece. So why not just collect it right now because you're getting it for free. All right, so let me just close this up and open here. All right, so you're getting it for free. Now, what I would do with that is I'll take that information and I will contact them, call them on the phone, uh, email them, however I'm able to contact them. And because I have it in Microsoft Excel, and I'll have, you know, uh, Peter Wolfing site would be um, PBC, whatever it happens to be, SafeList Target Pro Blaster date 6 15 11 and whatever information I have here so now I can take this information and I can use an emailer to insert all of this information into the mailer itself okay and there you have you know direct people that um, are people that you want to look for in your business all right so that's a safe list so let me move on to something else Oh, so I'm going to run out of time here. Traffic exchanges are, again, membership sites that you can join. And, again, SafeList, you can just go on the Internet, type in top SafeList on Google, and you'll find a lot of them. Go on the Internet, type in top traffic exchanges, and you'll find a lot of them. And so if we go over here, go over here to Google, top traffic exchanges, okay, best rated, you know, You know, so you look over here and find the, the ones you're looking for. I'm just going to click on the top one. I haven't looked at any of these, so I don't know. All right, so here they have some listed right here. So let's see. I'll go to um, I'll go to Traffic Swarm. So in a traffic exchange, you join as a member, and you in turn will look at other people's solicitations as far as a web page, and you have to view it for 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever their criteria is, and you earn a credit. Once you earn a credit, the more credits you earn, then you're able to use those credits to put in the rotation for other people to see your web page. Okay, so there's automatic, there's automated traffic exchanges, and there's um, uh, manual traffic exchanges, which are mainly the ones that I recommend because it forces people to at least look at the web page a little bit. If it's automated, no. And uh, my internet is very slow. I have lots of stuff running at one time here. So you have this traffic exchange, okay, and then you just join as a member, okay. Now, um, so what you're doing is you're going through and you're um, rotating, watching other people's websites, gaining credits, and then those credits are used for to put in the rotator for those people to see your website, all right. So uh, the important thing there's there's really uh, two main important things in traffic exchanges. Number one is obviously getting credits. You want to get as many credits as possible. You can buy them or use them or you know whatever you're using. Generally what I'll do a lot of times is I'll have multiple tabs set up on my my browser and I'll open you know five or six at one time, maybe up to as many as ten, and I'll extend my browser as far over to the right as possible and I'll open a few of them over here. And as they're ticking down to give me the credits, I'll just go from one to the next one to the next one you know, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And by the time I'm over at the end, this one's ready to go. And I go over here, click the credit. Go over here, click the credit. Go over here, click the credit. See what I'm doing? And I go over here, and you, you, um, you don't have to sit there and stare at the website for 20, 30 seconds to get the credit. You could be over here doing something else and um, get the credit that way. All right, so uh, Traffic G, and, you know, there's, there's many of them. Now, it's not every traffic exchange is going to work. Um, for you in specific ways, so you have to kind of go through. And there, there's literally, you know, dozens, if not hundreds, of traffic exchanges out there. So that's another way to build your business called traffic exchanges. Now, the second part of the traffic exchange formula is having a web page that is going to get people's attention very quickly within a few seconds. And generally, you want to have a lead capture page, not necessarily a full-blown website. 
Um, you want to have a lead capture page that is going to be having most of the information at the top. Okay, um, most of the information at the top here. So if you go to like one of my my pages, um, let's see. Okay, so uh, if you go some over here, you can see here's one. So okay, so you have right up front over here. Okay, they can see it right up front. Most of the information here is right up uh, ab what they call above the fold, so to speak. And you don't have a ton of information for them to read. They can glance at it and bam, that's it. Then you know the movie starts automatically and it's going to get their attention. Okay, so that's what you want with your lead capture page. Something really short and sweet so they can see it right away. Um, Let's see, like here's another one for the same thing. So you can go in and bam, they're right in their face and they can see it and the video starts. Okay, um, and that's basically what you're looking for. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so I think you get the point. You know, same type of thing over here. So, you know, right there. So whatever lead capture page you're using, that's what you want to do. All right, so uh, short and sweet. So again, getting credits and... Um, having people notice you very, very quickly when they're looking at their solicitations or websites. Uh, Dave says uh, Maxthon, M-A-X-T-H-O-N, is a good browser for traffic exchanges. You can just hit F3 to change the tab so you don't have to click every one. Okay. Uh, that's M-A-X-T-H-O-N is a browser that you can look up on the Internet, guys. Maxthon. Thanks a lot, Dave. I appreciate that. I actually uh, designed one called Surf30 that would automatically, without clicking, it would set the um, how many minute, how many second delay between switching, and it would automatically switch from uh, tab to tab to tab and everything. It was, it was really cool. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to skip around here. I just want to make sure that I get through the, the biggies here. Okay. Um, okay. My, my, one of my favorites, if not the favorite of mine, is foam blasting. Um, for those who don't know what foam blasting is, it's where you can record an automated message, which is generally 30 seconds or less, and you can blast that out using an automated mechanism system to blast it out, and you can contact hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people very quickly, and really right now, it's uh, very inexpensive, okay? Um, at least my charges for when I do phone broadcasting and for my programs are as low as 0.9 cents a minute for broadcasting. So with six-second billing, you're talking a 30-second message is a half a cent, you know, to a half a cent to a, a one and a half cents, depending on which plan you're on. So uh, very inexpensive, and it's all about exposure, okay? How many exposures can you give to the person or people out there about whatever opportunity you're showing them? So with foam blasting, the reason why I like it is you can get massive exposure very quickly. Uh, you can just set it up within a few minutes, and you're getting leads within you know minutes after you set it up. Okay, so it's really, really, really fast as far as uh, getting information out there to people, and very cost effective. So um, you can use the the leads from the safe list and things like that as well and other methods that I'll go into that you can use leads uh, you know buying leads or list scrapers and things like that to do a phone broadcast and uh, get it out to people as fast as possible so uh, now in phone broadcasting the uh, the components basically are a short message of about 30 seconds or less and uh, let me see maybe do I have a message over here I can show you let's see Uh, well, you're not you're not going to be able to hear it anyway, so that's all right. Because uh, I I have a different speaker on, so let's see. Uh, question here. Dave says, do you have any programs out there that will spider your email to collect the information you need? Uh, yeah, I'm going to cover that in a little bit, Dave. So um, so the 30 second message. Move over back over here. Let me go over here. Okay. All right. So. You have your 30-second your message going out to people, okay? And 
that's meant to sort and sift. You don't want to have it too long because really all you're doing is you want to find the right, person, right time in their life uh, for a person to look at something. That's it. The vast majority of people are not going to uh, do anything with that phone solicitation you're going to send out, and that's okay. I mean, when you get one, do you hang up? Well, I do sometimes and sometimes I don't. Um, I might be busy or it might not be the right time in my life to look at something or I, maybe I'm just curious to find out what it is or whatever. And for many people, it might be the right time. So if you get yourself uh, a half percent to two percent response, that's okay you know, in marketing terms. And for the amount of money you're spending on a phone broadcast, it's certainly worth it. So in that first 30 seconds, you can look at it two ways. Okay, I'm doing it to get leads or I'm doing it to opt out people. Okay, whatever perspective you're looking at, right? I'm looking to and and I'm looking to opt out the 99% of the people that I don't want to talk to, or that's not the right time in their life, or I'm looking to get the 1% that I want to get to through the process. So you, and you might even get more than 1% to start the process, look at your video and so on, but maybe you end up with a little bit more than that at the end. So um, now after that, you'll on this message, you can tell them to press a number to be removed or press one. So number, say most people do nine to be removed or one for more info. Okay, and when they press one for more info, you can direct the phone call to wherever you want. You can direct it to you or what most people do is they'll send it to a voicemail which will... Um, give them more information about uh, what you're doing. Now, uh, there's two schools of thought on the voicemail. You can have a short one, short voicemail, and that's maybe 30 seconds to a minute, brief information, and you're going to have more people leave their name and information if you do a short email, uh, short voicemail, because they don't know that much, right? The less information you give, they just don't know that much. Or you can have a longer voicemail, Sorry, I'm drawing with a mouse here, so sorry. Or you can have a long voicemail, which will sort and sift out people more, but when they leave their name and number, you're going to get better quality. So um, generally, I've been more recently using longer voicemails because I want to talk to a little bit more qualified people than, uh, than I do with a short voicemail. And I'm not necessarily looking for people that want a job. I'm not looking for people that are broke. I'm looking for people that have a little bit of money to put into a business and things like that. So I'll sort and sift them out through the voicemail. And in the voicemail, I also give the, the, the website URL. I don't put it over here in the 30-second part. I put it over here in the voicemail part because in the 30-second part, I don't want to give the voicemail because the person just picked up the phone. They don't have a pen to write it down. They're going to forget, things like that. I'll shoot them over to the voicemail. And in this longer voicemail, I'll give my website three or four or five times, maybe, you know, at least two times, so they have time to write it down. So, um, so that's generally the school of thought. Now, at the end of the voicemail, they can leave a message, or they can go right to your website, and um, of course, look at that and go through whatever you know videos or whatever you have there. So, um, I've been using that on uh, on the programs that I have with with great success and so on. Now, the second part of this thirty uh, second message, we're assuming that the people in this one are home and they pick up the phone. Now, what happens if they're not home? Well, it goes to their voicemail. And in the voicemail, you leave basically the same message as you would on the outbound message if somebody picks up the phone live. But maybe, you know, at, at the end of this message, you're going to say, you know, press 1 for more information or press 9 to be removed. At the end of the voicemail part, I'll say, uh, I'll give the website and I'll give the phone number for the voicemail because they can't press a number, right? So at the beginning of the voicemail, I might say something like, oh, hey, hi, I see you're not home right now. Let me leave a quick message. And then I'll go into the voicemail for more information, you know, whatever, whatever. But you want to make sure the voicemail is not more than, say, 45 seconds because a lot of voicemails cut off after that point. And if you go more than that, they might cut off your phone number or the, the, the website you want it to go to or whatever information you want to give them. So I wouldn't go more than 45 seconds on that, that outbound that message for the voicemail. So try to keep it around there, and you should be pretty much, pretty much safe. Now, what many people do also is they will not even do this part, and they'll only do voicemail targeted messages. And if somebody picks up the phone, it either just hangs up, <clears throat> Or they have a recorded message on here that says something like, oh, sorry, wrong number, and they hang up, okay? Um, 
and so that um, you know is their specific target. They want to go more for voicemail people uh, and leaving a message on a voicemail. Now, if you're doing that, you want to try to think of what's the best time to do this. Well, mostly the best time to do this is when people are at work because you want to get the voicemail, and you would probably do it during the afternoon. And um, if you want to get people live, the contrary is true. You want to probably dial a phone to try to get people live when they're home, which is usually after they get back from work. And that's generally 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock in whatever time zone you're broadcasting. And most broadcasting systems will be able to uh, designate you know, time zones and things like that. So that is uh, phone broadcasting. Okay, so let's see. Okay, of course, um, let's go into another one. Emailing. Um, of course, you know, emailing is not as uh, in vogue as it used to be even 10 years ago when uh, it was all the rage. The main reason why is because um, of spam filters. I mean, uh, of course, they can spam act and so on, but spam filters, I mean, it's very frustrating, even on my end, when I have customers that tell me, I never got the link for the software. Well, it's almost like as soon as you put a link in the email, then it's going to get picked off, you know, or it has a high chance of getting picked off. So it's really, really frustrating. And um, so you have to understand that when you're doing emailing, although um, you, it's not terribly difficult and not th that expensive to do emailing, you have to do a lot. You're not going to get 1%. You're going to get probably one one thousandth of 1% response, you know, or one one hundredth of 1% response, something like that. And, uh, of course, those numbers would vary depending on the, how targeted the list is, right? So uh, if you have a really good targeted list or you have a personal list of yourself, you know, that you own, that you that these people know you, obviously the, the, uh, the response rates are going to be totally different than if you use a, uh, you know, a cheapo list, you know. So, um, and I'm not going to go over, you know, structuring emails and subject lines and things like that uh, today. But I just want to expose you to this. Now, how do you get out emails? Well, you have um, autoresponders. Now, autoresponders are, you know, kind of a uh, a weird thing. It's kind of a how can I say? Um, Many people have come into network marketing and they think an autoresponder is supposed to be able to send out emails for you and you're able to upload the list to the autoresponder and it'll send out. That's more like an auto sender, not an autoresponder. And most of, this, of the autoresponders out there will not let you do that or they're very strict with what you can upload because, let's face it, if you upload garbage lists, it's going to blacklist their server so they can't have you do that. And that's why AWeber and GetResponse and a lot of the big ones uh, most of the big ones, if not all, will not let you do that. So autoresponder and auto sender are two different things. Now, uh, the other thing you can use is, an, is a dedicated emailing system. Um, I happen to use two of them. I have two of them. One is uh, called ZipSender. And uh, ZipSender.com is um, an emailer that I've been using, and I use it myself and sell it. Uh, it's been like six, seven years now. And that needs to be hosted on a web site. So um, we suggest uh, HostGator, which is the one we use, and uh, you need a domain name. So it's maybe 15 bucks a month, and you'll be able to get out small batches. I tell people to keep them under you know, 175 to 200 a batch, and uh, if you consistently just upload the batch, in, I tell people send it very slow, so probably make it about 175 an hour, and uh, then you'll get out a few thousand a day doing that. You just you know, every hour you just upload a new list. So um, it's uh, very cost effective at a whopping 15 bucks a month. Now, the other one that I sell is very high end, meaning that it's more for if you're looking to get out massive volume and you're looking to, you know, you want the Rolls Royce. You know, you want the best, the best deliverability, the most functions on it and so on, which is uh, automatic prospector. Okay, and I'm not necessarily going to take you to the website. You can go check it out whenever you want. Uh, automaticprospector.net, if you go to the product page, there's a video, a 30 to 45 minute, maybe an hour video, I forget how long it is, um, regarding all the different things that, that it can do. Now, I'm going to warn you that the, our programmer that we had on doing this back in January, he is very technical. So he is going to let you know every little nook and cranny that the software can do. 
And sometimes if you're new, you're like, oh, my God, how am I going to know this? Because it's, <laughs> he lets you know every little nook and cranny thing you do. And the thing is like Star Trek as far as software. So, but people are going to use maybe 5% of what the software can do. And we actually have people that for $20 an hour, they'll walk you through the software and they'll help you set it up and, and let you know everything you could possibly ever want to know about the software and so on. And it'll literally do everything that you want, ever wanted to do. And we've done five updates on that software since we launched it. So uh, now that software, we have a listing of over 4,600 hosting companies that uh, range from anywhere from a dollar a month to say ten dollars a month for the hosting package and let me explain to you how that would work if and this one here depending on how many hosting packages you have you can send out a million for ten or twenty bucks a month I mean it's it's really that powerful but think of uh, emailing as um, a, a wheel okay the central hub is the is the inner part of the wheel okay and that's the emailer which co which is sending from your desktop and then you have the the wheel on the outside, and this is where the rubber is, you know, on the wheel, and then you have the spokes of the wheel. Okay. Okay. So in, in wheel terms, so this part is the is the hub, which is the in, inner part, and that's the emailer. These spokes that go out and connect onto the wheel, and now this here is the internet. This part here is the internet. These spokes here and are connecting your computer and your um, automatic prospector with the hosting companies that are like right here at the top. Okay? And the more hosting companies you have, and you can have as little as one, and you can have as many as a thousand. It really all depends on how many hosting companies you want. Because what it'll do, and most companies will allow up to 500 emails an hour and they don't bother you. But we tell people, stay you know, 100 to 200, 250 an hour maximum. Say 200 an hour, okay? Now, if each one of these hosting companies here, you're sending out 200 an hour and it's rotating from one to another to another to another, not every hour, but it's rotating at whatever time frame you designate. It could be every five minutes, it could be every 10 minutes or whatever, and it also will randomize that. It'll change the, the you know, one time it's five minutes, one time it's two minutes, one time it's four minutes, one time it's seven minutes, and it, it's got so many randomization features in there, it's like make your head spin. So it'll rotate through all of these, and what you're really doing is you're piggybacking on the credibility of these hosting websites. Because what happens many times, and this happens also with ZipSender once in a while, is because you have a server that you're you're sending the information through and most of the time you're using what's called a shared server which means you are just one account on that server with maybe a hundred other people that are also hosting part of that server it's called a share you're sharing the the server and each one of these people has a website so if you're one of those people sending on the server and you have two or three bad apples over here that are doing things the, the wrong way, it blacklists the whole server and ruins it for everybody else. Okay, So that's the perils of a shared server, which means your deliverability is not that great. Contrast that to over here, it's all about deliverability. So if you are on here and you're spreading the wealth with 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 uh, other hosting, hosts, each one of these you're sending, say, 100 to 200 an hour. Now, what you're doing is you're piggybacking on all of these here, and you're not loading up all your eggs in one basket. Okay, You're spreading them all out here, and then you have better deliverability because not only is, are you sending very slow, which is what, what companies are looking at, but also you're rotating the time speed, you're rotating the subject lines, you're rotating the body of the email, and you're randomizing every possible aspect of the email so it looks like a different email is going out to every one of these you know, so you're randomizing every possible aspect of the email, and that's what filters want. And uh, our programmer that put this together is also one of the top programmers in spam filters, so he knows what he's talking about. So um, that's why you're looking here at, um, you know, more deliverability, and you can send out literally, uh, you know, up to a million a month for 10 or 20 bucks a month. Because if you get, you know, hosts that are a dollar, two dollars, three dollars a month, and you say you get uh, fifteen of them at two dollars a month, that's thirty bucks a month. Doing two hundred an hour each one for twenty-four hours a day for thirty days a month, do the math, and that's how many you're getting out. So it is massive, massive, guys. So 
but here you're talking about here fifty dollars for the software. You're talking over here five hundred dollars for the software. So uh, what kind of quality are you looking for? Now, if you're doing a lot of emailing, then um, I'd say go to this one because you know whatever program you're marketing, if you get one sale, it might be worth pay for the whole software. You know, and this is a one-time payment, both of them. So you're you're talking um, you know a lot a lot uh, better response rate and sign up rate in your chosen program. And again, we do training on all this stuff too. So, all right, so that's emailing and um, that's what you want to look for. So if you're doing any kind of other, you know, service, make sure you understand this part here with the, the hosting company and you, that you're probably on a, a shared server type of situation. That's why um, autoresponder companies that let you upload leads are very, very cautious about what they let you do because if they have a lot of people using their hosting uh, and on their autoresponder and they have people are uploading garbage lists is going to ruin it for a lot of people on that server so that's why they have to worry about that all right uh, Trevor says I look forward to using zip center great I mean I've been selling it for six seven years I mean it's, it's a very simple easy to use software um, and it runs uh, virtually on a on your web browser it's not your desktop where this one here is a is a brow uh, a desktop version um, Okay, let's see. All right, let's go on to something else. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, um, text blasting. Um, and I'm just going to touch on this really quickly. Um, I am coming out with a text blasting service, and that'll be probably later this month, if not the first or second week in July. I'm testing it right now. And uh, it's a real text broadcasting service. So you all know what texting is where you can put in a short uh, message into a system that will blast out to cellular phones and they can in turn call a number, go to a website, whatever, and you make it you know, short and sweet and not too much uh, information on it So because you don't have you know, a tremendous amount of information to give them. But um, uh, that's a, uh, pretty much a, an untapped market. There's not that many services out there that do that, but it's very similar to phone broadcasting. But you're you're mess blasting out text messages to people, and studies show that 90 some odd, if not high 90s, percentage wise, of people look at text message with with uh, very very frequent on their text phones. Versus, uh, you know, emailing and so on that a lot of people won't even look, and it goes to the spam folders and so on, as uh, people will you know look at their safe list. Uh, excuse me, look at their text very very quickly on their phone so uh, the system that I'm going to be putting together will also um, check your list when you upload it to see which ones are cell phone numbers and which ones aren't of course uh, you know blocking lists and things like that you can also build your own cellular phone website right on the in the website so you can it'll be cellular phone ready convert all your images all that kind of stuff you can do an autoresponder system right on the text message system um, where you can send out a text broadcast, press one for the compensation plan, press two for the the product, press three to join, whatever, and they and you designate in your back office uh, what those one, two, and three numbers are when they press that number, and it'll spit out another message to them. Okay, and uh, it'll be detailed for that specific number that they press. So you can customize it any which way you want, and. Uh, uh, you know, do uh, autoresponder messages. You can do one-time blasts. You can upload your the phone numbers, create websites. Uh, you know, all sorts of different things with the system itself. So and uh, so, it's going to be dynamite. So hopefully, uh, I'll be doing a webinar, obviously, on this this marketing technique in the near future, within the next 30 days. So um, so you want to go out if you can find another text broadcasting system that will let you upload lists and so on. Certainly, you know, give it a try. Now, it's more expensive than phone broadcasting. But um, uh, the key thing is that people look at it a lot more than phone broadcasting or emailing, so um, it's still a little bit more expensive. And um, we are talking generally, you know, less than ten cents a message, you know. So um, and it'll vary, you know, it'll from anywhere from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cents per message, usually depending on volume on how much you're getting out versus um, you know other people. So. You know, and the criteria would vary depending on the company that you're using. All right. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, list scraping. 
Now, list scraping has become very much in vogue the last two years. Um, I've developed uh, three, actually four, but uh, three main softwares myself that do list scraping. There's a few of them out there, so if you're interested in that, please look around. But uh, list scraping is a software that you can type in keywords into the software to be able to locate um, specific types of people on the, the, on the net. So uh, if you type in, you know, maybe a name of a company, Amway, Meluca, Newskin, Tupperware, whatever it happens to be, um, Zango, whatever, it'll find those people that are listed on the, on the net, depending on where it's searching on the net, and uh, pull up as much information as possible where you can take that information, export it into, say, uh, Microsoft Excel or something like that, and then you take it and you email those people and or you phone broadcast those people and so on and use uh, the information that you've collected. Now, the good thing about that, yeah, um, Fritzner, if you have a question, just type it in, okay? So the a good thing about that is if you now, in the, the list scraping, if you know the, the name, and of course, if you typed in a company name, you know the company that they're in, say, uh, you know, say just for instance, Amway, whatever, you know, it could be anything. But if you know the company or industry that they're in, and email and phone, okay, now you can go in and you can design your list, your emailing list, and or your phone broadcasting audio to the company, okay? So you can say, uh, a, attention all Amway distributors now because you know they're part of Amway right and then you go blah 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 and you, you tailor your 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 email message or your phone broadcast to those people because um, the more information that you um, can tell them that you have it sounds more legitimate so you can do obviously you can only do so much in the phone broadcasting but you can uh, tell them what company you know they're from and if you're doing emailing you can have the system from like I have over here, you might have information like this, name, email, phone number, and say like uh, zip sender and automatic prospector and so on. They will gather that information and put it into the email at whatever point you want, and that's called a tag. You'll take that, um, this information here, and you'll say, okay, at this point, I want the first name. I want the first name to go here, I want the last name to go here, I want the email to go here, I want the site to go here, and it'll take and it will um, des put that information right into the, um, the email itself. All right, Frister says, if someone mails in their monthly membership payment to me, um, okay, well, it, I mean, it's more, of a, on a, it's more of a question, Frister, on a specific website I have, but if someone mails in their monthly membership payment to me, how do I put it through the system so their account can become active? Well, first of all, you have to go to, <coughs> excuse me, go to the mark payment section. Go to the mark payment section, and you can manually mark them as paid. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So you have, um, you know, this information that you can use to uh, to gather. Now you can also take the information if you have enough of it, and uh, go to directory websites through the scrapers that you have and go to um, gather mailing addresses as well and do postcard mailing, okay? Postcard mailing. So, you know, that's another, uh, you know, way that you can do that. Now, I'm, I'm not, I mean, going to show you my scrapers because I have a few of them, but um, uh, just um, you know that they're out there, okay? So, um, so list scraping, and, and it's, list scraping kind of goes in conjunction with a lot of the other stuff that's over here. So, now I just mentioned postcards. And the postcards are a different animal altogether. It's not more. It's not like an electronic method. And uh, probably the two most important things on postcards, obviously, are the design of the card, and what it's telling people, and also the the, the list itself. You have to have a good list. You can't just use a garbage list because you're going to be paying through the nose with the postage and the printing and all that kind of stuff. So. You really want to pay a little bit more for the list so that this way you're getting better quality when you send it out because otherwise you'll, you'll get like, you know, crazy uh, kickbacks and, and undeliverables and things like that. So um, make sure that you get a decent list. And that's where also list scraping comes in too, where you can use a list scraper to, to gather 
uh, postcard mailing addresses and uh, and so on and that's usually through directory sites um, that you can gather through depending on obviously it would vary from the software to software but um, so I've done whole webinars on postcards itself and the actual design of the postcards and so on so uh, we're not going to really go too much into um, the design of the well not really at all into the design of the postcards but I wanted to expose you to that just for a second Okay, so uh, now something to think about postcards is usually the dollar amount. The dollar amount is much more than some of the other ones up here because you have to pay, um, you know, especially postage, printing, maybe design, and the list. Okay, so you're you're paying for all of that, and you but when you send it out, it's a different. Um, visual that you're sending to those people because they're seeing a physical card versus getting something virtual through a phone broadcast and so on. It's, so it's a different kind of flip in their mentality. They may keep it for a while. They may respond later on or whatever. So um, you could do that. Now, generally, the school of thought on postcards, there's, you know, go fancy with the card or go simple with the card. I've heard people argue both ways. Uh, generally, uh, I mean, when I did split testing, I got slightly better responses on a simpler postcard that's um, not too fancy. Okay, um, just simple it has the text on it, the information, something they can see really quickly, and I've got a, a little bit better results on that. Uh, I haven't done that much split taste testing, but I've done some, and uh, that's generally what I found. It's not, I mean, hugely tilted in one direction or the other, but it it, it did get me a little bit better response on the the basic uh, a basic card, not something too flashy. Okay, something I like a lot, and some of you maybe are here from uh, when I send out, which is video email. There's a few companies out there that offer video email, um, and uh, we're not, we won't go into them tonight. So, uh, but you know that video email is going to give people. Well, let me let me just back up a second. If we go so much into technology, and you try, you know, listen, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want people to see me. And you get too much into the technology. You have to know that you have to really contact more and more people than normal because if you don't want to talk to people, it's just the way it is. The further away you get from belly to belly contact, the more you have to go in and and uh, and just do volume. So what video email does is it gives kind of an attachment to those people. They physically see you. You know, you kind of um, do a video email. You know, where you say, "Hey, I'm. I just want to reach out over the internet and shake your hand and let you know that I'm a real living, breathing person." And, whatever you want to tell them in the video email so rather than just sending them a simple email you, you, you pop out a quick video to them and or, and or you can have one uh, made you know you make it ahead of time and it's in, in like your stock of all the different things you have and just press the button and send out so um, so I love video email I started really doing video email around July or August of last year and uh, it's it's really gotten me a lot more sales than it, than it has it so it's, it's it's been a lot more positive than negative okay um, yeah, June says um, videos give it a personal effect. Absolutely. So it gives you a personal effect, and, you, and it's all about building relationships with other people. You want people to see that you're real, that you're breathing, that you're a real person, and it, it'll bridge the gap between all of the technology out there. And especially if you're doing high ticket end programs, you want to try to do that because, um, you know, if you're charging someone 500000 3000 or more to join your program, you really have to have some kind of a personal touch because most people aren't just going to send it through the mail without speaking to somebody first or they want to get to know you a little bit you know so um, that's why video email is, is key in that regard okay the other one is eh, maybe a little bit related to that but it's a uh, video marketing and if you're a member of um, my site on YouTube which is um, <clears throat> If you're not, I urge you to get on there and just subscribe. Um, I have a lot of my webinars on there, and I have over 120 some on videos and mainly training videos. Okay, so you can go and you can register. You know, register as a, as a member on there. It's free, obviously. And uh, anytime I put up a new video, you'll get an instant notification, and you'll be able to um, you know watch a lot of the trainings that I do. So. Um, but one of the reasons why I did the video marketing and I upload so many videos is for traffic, it's for exposure, 
to uh, you know to who I want people to know who I am and a little bit about myself. So now when I go to talk to people and I'm trying to to recruit people into you know one of the programs that I that I do that I design is you know is uh, anywhere from from two hundred fifty dollars up to fourteen thousand dollars you know to get started. Most people are obviously are, are joining uh, in, in between that, but anywhere between a thousand and seven thousand. But I put a lot of videos up there because I say, listen, I'm very high profile. I'm not going out. I'm not hiding behind anything. Hey, go to my YouTube account. Get to know me a little bit. Look at some of my videos. And that's why I put it over there because I, uh, well, that's one of the reasons why, is I want people to, sh to see people, I want people to see that I'm real, that I'm a real breathing person. I, and, I, and I want them to, to see that I know what I'm talking about when I talk about it. So that's uh, you know, one of the things that I do in video marketing. Now, the other thing, also is um, check out this site as well realitymlm.com that's a website I'm just setting up which is free and it's like it's like YouTube but it's specifically designed to the MLM community and uh, you can upload videos and so on but it's it's all specifically designed to uh, MLM so uh, and we're just getting that off the ground so uh, you know go there create an account upload stuff you can also uh, if you have videos over at YouTube, you can copy and paste the embed code over there, and it'll show up on there. And that's just more, um, more meat for the uh, the uh, the spiders from Google to go find you and index you, get more links to you, and get more exposure for you as well too. So, and there's a lot of other uh, video sites out there that I I actually have uh, my assistants do that. Where every time I make a new video, they'll go and they'll upload the videos to you know 10 or 15 video sites for me. So, um, so there's a lot of them out there that you can go and do that and get more and more exposure. Okay. Um, okay. Roy has to leave, but he says, "I'm sorry, I'm fading fast." <laughs> I guess it's too late for him. Uh, thanks again for your efforts in bringing this to us. Every so often, a little gem of knowledge clicks through in this old cranium. Good night and thanks. Well, that's true. You know, guys, uh, you may have heard this before. Sometimes you have to hear it multiple times, but sometimes you might hear something that. Uh, a little thing here that maybe put your business in a whole other direction. So, uh, video marketing, and I've done, you know, videos. Uh, I'm sorry, I've done webinars on video marketing that uh, have taken a whole webinar to do. So, I'm going to speed up a little bit. We're getting a little bit short on time, but I just wanted to cut up, uh, contact a few more things here. Okay, magazine ads. Okay, now this is uh, again not a virtual thing, but you can. Um, go and place magazine ads like USA Today, um, and you want to look at uh, Wolf and speak to Randy and tell him I sent you over here. And it's always nice to know. I don't make any money on it, but it's, I just want to let him know. So if I do an ad with him in the future, which I do many times, he'll treat me good. <laughs> so uh, look on on the internet. Um, I think it's WolfEnterprises.net, but uh, you can. Look on Google, and you'll be able to find them over there. Great prices on all sorts of advertising, and but they do industry-specific advertising. And um, let me see. I'm going to be in. I'm going to be actually be on the cover of this one. Um, let's see. Home <coughs> business advertiser. This magazine here is virtual, but it also has a uh, a physical copy that they send to people. And you can see the previous um, uh, magazines over there and just subscribe to it. They'll mail it to you as well. And I'm going to actually be on the cover next month. Um, and uh, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, they'll also have an interview. They're interviewing me as well in that magazine too. So uh, home business advertiser, and you want to speak to Bobby. Bobby Schwartz. And really great guy. He'll help you out. And... and um, you know the prices are very good as well too, and uh, just mention that I, um, you know, that I sent you over there. And again, I don't make any money on it, so um, I just wanted to let them let them know that uh, I'm thinking about them and so on. So uh, there's you know a lot of other ones, just cutting edge. Now this is more expensive only because they have a bigger circulation and home business connection. And you can you know place advertisements. Little two-inch advertisements for a hundred bucks a month, two hundred bucks a month, or whatever, you know. So it's going to, um, you know, certainly help you uh, in the long run to get again exposure to uh, to whatever you're doing. Now, oh, one thing I want to mention also is uh, we did a 
a week and a half ago, we did a, um, a, a webinar to help tornado victims. We had a lot of people on there. This was the website here, mlmcares.com. You can check it out. And we're still taking donations for that as well. And 100% of the money goes to uh, tornado victims. Starts out as low as 25 bucks one time um, to, to do that if you want to donate that. But the reason why I'm telling you that, and you'll see that the, just go over there and click on donate, and you'll find out the different packages we have, and we give leads and all sorts of stuff. Um, but the reason why I'm telling you that is that Bobby over at homebusinessadvertiser.com, anything that you donate over here, if you tell him you donated, he's going to take it off the ad. So you're getting the credit toward the ad plus helping people here as well too. So um, you know, consider that if you're looking to do an advertisement or something, and, and Bobby said he would credit you towards the advertisement. Of, it has to be at least a quarter page and up. Um, so you know, that's, uh, you're getting you know, like, uh, free credit, which is great. So let's see. Um, Larry says, um, I now have material for a new article. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, hey, check this out. So again, we're ta still taking donations for this here um, to help the tornado victims as well. Often overlooked is a signature line on your email. Okay, you're over here with your email. Every time you send an email out, okay, the signature line would go down in the bottom, and the signature line would automatically populate there if you have it set up in your system. So um, there's a, a few sites out there that will do signature lines for you, and um, or you can just go on and just put do it yourself, and also use uh, what's called a vacation notice or responder in your signature system and uh, even if you're not on vacation that means that anybody that sends you something they're automatically going to get something sent back to them and you know you can say something as little as hey I just got your email um, I'll let you know I'm going to respond pretty soon at it but uh, have you seen the other things that I'm doing and then you know it it's like a, f a free automated email that goes out to the person that sent you something okay and uh, and you'll get that that information and you know, both ways. So you'll have the email come in, you respond to that, but the um, uh, the vacation notice also goes out to the person with whatever you designated to tell them. And the signature line is going to go on the bottom of the emails um, so that this way you can, you know, let them know a little bit about yourself, how to contact you, and how to get more information about what are the, are the other things that you're doing. Okay, uh, we did a few webinars recently on blogging and setting up a blog. And if you don't have a blog yet, what are you waiting for? Get a blog, especially one with your name on it. You know, get your name. And if you don't have, um, you know, your name dot com locked up, I mean, you're 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 just uh, not with the program here. You have to really get uh, try to buy your domain name, you know, johnsmith.com or whatever your name is, <clears throat> and hopefully it's still available. Because if it's not, I mean, somebody else can buy it and uh, they can, you know, wreak havoc on your name. So uh, you want to at least buy it and get it so this way other people aren't going to be able to, uh, to use your name. But generally, uh, like on mine, okay, uh, peterwolfing.com. So, and I use this as a central hub of a lot of my marketing. I have my YouTube video over here. Um, articles that I put on over here. I have my blog role. These are different programs that I do over here that I have. So um, you know, you, and these are getting linked through um, through Google and so on. So people can see what you're doing. And, and I add articles over here too. You know, um, and I haven't really put advertisements over here yet, which I just haven't had a chance to get to. But I want to do that. Uh, that's one thing I'm missing. And um, you know, follow me up on the web through social media. So you know, you should really get a blog for yourself. Um, I do have a, a huge, I mean, system that I put together um, with other people called Blog Toolbox, and uh, that system it actually built this site, and it does it all for you. It builds all the articles and everything for you, uh, no programming involved, and uh, you know, it's it's a whopping. Uh, it's free the first month, nine ninety five every month after that, which you have to buy the the hosting anyway and you're getting a premium blog system that has like 75 different websites to pick from and uh, designs and all that kind of stuff. It's, this is an amazing system. So, um, you know, check that out. But you really should get a blog and I use it as like a central hub for a lot of my marketing. I'll put my YouTube, my Facebook, all my others, my, my um, Twitter stuff over here and uh, with my blog and then every time I 
I post something on the blog, I'll go over to Twitter and Facebook and I'll post it on there and it'll like reciprocate traffic back and forth so you have traffic coming from uh, you know the blog, Facebook and Twitter and even if you do LinkedIn and so on um, and, uh, and YouTube so it'll kind of give information and, and traffic back and forth from each one. Uh, Saul says, why the home page has the same look for all Blog Factory subscribers? Because you have to go in and you have to um, select a template, okay? And then you can go in and you can, after you have everything set up, you can go in and change whatever you want as far as uh, the pictures, graphics, and, and so on. So uh, that is why. Okay, so let's see. Uh, and of course, I just touched on this quite a bit. You know, so Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, um, and there's you know tons of other ones. Facebook, really, I didn't spell it right. <clears throat> so uh, you have quite a bit there to to go out now. Social media is a way to do advertising for free. All right, for free. You should be on there every single day cultivating leads on Facebook. I mean, we've done whole webinars on just Facebook only, you know, marketing on Facebook and, and so on. So um, as a matter of fact, if I'm going back here to MLMcares.com, we did eight hours of video, eight hours of video that um, covers every possible thing. Eight hours of video from experts in the field, and for 100 bucks, you get all eight hours plus um, you know, 4 million leads and all sorts of stuff with that. So it's definitely worth it. But we had a guy named ben, ben Dixon. For a whole hour, he talked about Facebook and how to generate free leads on Facebook for the rest of your life, free leads on Facebook. So, and the guy's a master at doing that, and uh, we covered that on, on uh, the webinar itself. So uh, once you master that, doing and generating leads on Facebook, I mean, uh, it's just it, Facebook is the gorilla out there right now, you know. So you want to try to learn how to do that and generate your leads through Facebook and Twitter and traffic and link backs and, and all sorts of stuff from all the different social media out there. Uh, let's see. Um, Larry says, what's my thought on MySpace? Um, MySpace is another one that you can get out there and, and uh, do the same type of thing you're doing with Facebook and Twitter, but um, you know, it's, it's kind of fallen a little bit out of vogue since Facebook got here, but um, I think it's great. You know? <laughs> Dave Key says, back in black, yeah, that's my ringer. My ringer is back in black. I like ACDC. So <laughs> you notice that, how huh, when it rings. Um, yeah, that's my phone ringer. Okay, uh, Saul says, um, the same articles and posts. Okay. Good. Dan, uh, hope you place this in boot camp archives. It would be a good share to new recruits. Yeah, this uh, video will be in uh, the boot camp uh, webinar series. It will be on YouTube probably by tomorrow. Um, so that's why I say go over here and um, go over to this here and subscribe, okay? So this one, when I take these videos and stuff and I, and I upload them, you're going to get them, okay? Um, June says, is there a video on the gentleman you just spoke of? Um, yeah, uh, Ben Dixon, there's, yeah, there is a video. The only thing, the video that we have is included with the eight hours of video that we have here for MLM Cares. And... Um, Let's see, do I have a, I'm not sure, I had him on um, boot camp webinar, I believe, talking about Facebook, so there might be one up there. I don't remember if we uploaded it or not, um, but um, if you can, you know, swing it, the $100 is, is well worth that, plus the $100, $100 of that is going to help tornado victims, and you're getting 4 million leads, and we have also like 40-something else videos that are included with that, and if you want to advertise in home business advertise, they're, they're going to take $100 off the advertisement, so all around it's a great deal and you're helping people too. So um, the, the education that you get from Ben Dixon, which is just one eighth of all the education you're getting on all of those different webinars that we have, uh, is going to show you how to generate leads on Facebook for the rest of your life. It, it really is. So uh, let's see. All right, well, it's after uh, 11 over here. I'm just going to touch on a few other things here. And uh, we do a webinar that ha says 101 ways to build your business. This happens to be like a, the top uh, 14 or 15 that we're going to touch on today. But there's so many different ways you can do this. Uh, you know, PR Web is another one where you can go on prweb.com, which is a, a public relations blast, and you can have them send out uh, different packages they have, send out a, uh, a PR blast about whatever you're doing. 
okay, about yourself, a new program you're doing, or something like that. So that's a, a PR, I think it's prweb.com. I think that's the URL, but check it out. PR Web is, a, is another way to go as well, too. Okay, I'm just looking. Okay, of course. Old standby, article marketing. And article marketing is uh, a way that you can write articles. And this is really kind of what I did here, too, where I have articles over here. This is dealing on financial empowerment. And... Um, Oh, I got three computers on here, just just sucking up the internet, so it's very slow. Um, anyway, so I have you know financial empowerment, and when I do that, I'm taking those articles and I'm submitting to article websites. I'm submitting it to, uh, yeah, my uh, internet is really slow right now, so it's it's timing out. So here we go. So anyway, financial empowerment, and it's going back to to blog toolbox. Okay. So you put your links over here, and these are articles that I wrote about different things, and you can you know link it into Facebook, into Twitter, and things like that. So um, there's a lot of things, and you can then you take these articles and you can submit them to article websites and so on. So then the traffic starts to get linked back to you, back to your Facebook, back to your Twitter, back to your blog, and you start generating traffic and leads and so on um, with that information. So that's the really the I was going to do ten, but that's really the some of the top fifteen ways. I guess you can't even say top. I mean, it's, there's so many different ways to build your business here. Uh, but that's maybe 15 of the 100 and some odd ways that I've covered, uh, some of the things that I've covered over in the webinar here. And, you know, I hope that you found it enlightening and some of the different things that can help you build your business. So um, let's see. Uh, any other final questions before I uh, uh, end the webinar this evening? I'd like to thank everybody for coming on the webinar, and hopefully this uh, was something that will help you build your business. Thanks, Josie. I appreciate it. Always good to be on the webinars. I appreciate that. Thanks, Sean. And, you know, please tell your team um, about the boot camp webinar. Please get people on here. If you can help them build their business, great, you know. Um, and uh, we'll have, you know, every week different stuff to talk about. Harriet, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, Dave, if you want to send me an email on that, I'll be happy to, to, uh, to answer that for you. Uh, send it to leadtoolbox, L-E-A-D, toolbox at gmail.com, okay? And just mention you were on the webinar last night, and I will answer that for you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. June says, uh, love all the info. Thank you very much for your time. It was awesome. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, look forward to seeing you next week on Bootcamp Webinar. Happy prospecting, and good luck. Bye for now.